Well, hello C++ programmers. Brian Malloy here. And this video is kind of a culmination of several we've had prior to this where we were trying to introduce move semantics. And we started by talking about what R value, what an L value is, what an R value is, what an L value reference is, and what an R value reference is. So kind of just to review all of that, um, one of the things we concluded was this is an L value. So when we call f of x, we're going to choose this one because it comes in as an L value and becomes a reference to an L value. And here, as soon as we say std move, that says to the compiler, this x is now an R value. So you choose this one. This one accepts L values. This one accepts R values. And then it becomes an R value reference. This is clearly an R value because it can never be on the left-hand side of, a mistake, of, a, of an assignment statement. So that's this one. Similarly, a function f of x returns a temporary. And temporaries, we just got to talk about that. Temporaries are, <clears throat> excuse me, automatically generated by the compiler. Um, and by that, what I mean by automatically generated, storage is allocated for them. They are returned when they are, when you get rid of the statement that used the temporary, then they are deallocated. So the compiler will delete those. So that's one of the things we need to uh, stress in here. Okay, so that's just a review of R value and L value references. And I have some, some other things in here I'd like to show you. Let's go to temporary deletions. My dog is upset. Let me just show you what I'm trying to, sh to indicate here. Namely that I just want to get the point across so that you understand the way we write uh, move constructors and move assignment operators that um, that compiler generated temporaries are are deleted by the compiler. I just want you to understand that. Otherwise, you'll think um, that certain implementations of move are incorrect. So I'm gonna not. I'm turning off um, a constructor elite elision so that return values will not be optimized out. So as we can see here, uh, we've got print statements up here. So what's going to happen? Well, we're going to call RVO. Um, and we come up here to RVO and we're going to use a default constructor to create a string. Then we're going to make a copy constructor to return the string. And then as we leave, we'll delete the default when we did by default. And then we will come back here and we will um, copy that into here and then we'll get a destructor. So let me convince you that that's what happens. Sammy? So that's what happened. And who deleted these guys? The compiler. So this one, this one, and this one is a destructor of a compiler generated temporary. This destructor here is a, the destructor called because of, of my copy constructor here. So this is where I use the copy constructor. And, and that, that will be deleted here. But those other two are deleted by the compiler. Okay, I think you probably get that. If not, um, then we need to perhaps review that again. Now I want to talk about a structure from the C++ 14 standard, and that's the exchange function. So here's exchange. I just want to show you that because it's a handy dandy function to use. We're slipping into C++ 14 here, um, and this exchange function is in the utility um, uh, module of the standard template library. You can find this on CPP reference. They have a nice explanation of what it does. Let me see if I can explain to you what it does. So it essentially what it does is it exchanges X and, and this this um, parameter and this parameter. How does it do that? Well it it saves the value of X, then assigns X to the right to this parameter and then function exchange returns the old value of x. So what does that mean? Well, x is 17, y is 21, z is 29. After this, x will be 0, and z will be the old value of x, 17. So we're going to get 0, um, 17, and y doesn't even figure into this. I don't know why. I've, I never even use y here. So let's go ahead and show you that that's the case. So. Um, we assign 0 to x, but we save its old value, 17, and we return that, so z gets that. Okay? I just want you to see how um, exchange works because we're going to use that. Okay, now we're all set. Let's go look at the rule of 5. Okay, so we're now ready for the rule of 5. 
So here we go with move constructors and move assignment operators. So let me just come down here. Okay, so let me review what's here. So we have a string class, kind of long, not too long, and we have uh, the default constructor, uh, what I call the conversion constructor. Um, we have the typical copy constructor, a delete, a destructor. Um, and now we have a move constructor and we have um, the copy assignment operator, which you are familiar with. And here we have um, the old move assignment. So let's see how this is going to work. We come down here and we, we're going to use a, convert, a, a default constructor here. Now, I don't have any any print statements here, so you're not going to see that happen, but this is going to be a default constructor, which we don't care about. We're just interested in move semantics here. And then on line 53, the conversion constructor will be called on this um, C string, and now we have a string equals a string, so we're actually going to use copy assignment. So let me just show you that. Let me run this. And we're going to get copy assignment and dog. Now, let me just say that I've elided some of the, I mean, I didn't put print statements in some of these other constructors. So that's a short, I just want you to see that we do use copy assignment here. Even though we could use um, move assignment, why do we not? The compiler does not generate a move uh, constructor or a move assignment operator if we write these other three. So if we follow the rule of three, we're not going to get the other two generated by the compiler. You should check that. There's a, there's a page on, um, on the CPP reference that talks about move constructors, and it indicates um, when this will happen. A shorthand version of it is this. If you write the functions for the rule of three, then you also have to write the two extra functions to get the rule of five. The compiler will not automatically generate those. Okay, so that's copy. Let me just show you what's involved here in copy. We have to check for assignment to self. We have to do a deletion. Now, deletions are very expensive. Okay, we have to reallocate storage to the free list. Then we do a new. News are allocations also. Um, very expensive. Then we copy this buffer into this buffer and we return star this. Now what I'm going to claim is that um, if I write a move constructor, now here's a move constructor. What do we do in the move constructor? Well, let me tell you several rules about this and I might review this in an extra video that I'll add later if, if, this, if there's some confusion about this. But essentially all we really do is swap pointers. So when we um, we call the conversion structure, so we get a string object here. That's going to be a compiler generated temporary. So that's we can even explicate this. We can just do it like this and make it explicit if you want. Okay. So that's going to but that's going to generate a compiler temporary, compiler generated temporary, so that we can then, and that since that's a compiler generated temporary, that's always an R value. So compiler generated temporaries are always R values. I think that's what move constructors really are all about, eliminating the copy of the compiler generated temporary. So what happens? So this compiler generated temporary comes in here as RHS. Then we swap whatever was in buff into rhs.buff, okay? So that, so what we're saying is that rhs.buff is now going to move to this, going to be assigned to this compiler generated temporary. Now, do we have a memory leak? No, because um, the buffer will be deleted um, because we switched these. The new compiler generated temporary, compiler generated temporary now is actually uh, buff. And so that will get deleted automatically. So this is a real slick, efficient implementation. So let me show it to you there. Oh, wait. Um, I didn't uncopy this. Sorry. Let me just show you that we get a move assignment. Let me do it again. And there's the move assignment. Now, I would claim that this move assignment is more efficient than this copy assignment. First of all, we don't do any news and we don't do any deletes because in either case we're going to have the co the conversion constructor call and this this compiler generated temporary. That's going to happen in any case. However, when we go into this move constructor, we simply swap um, our buffer 
with which is a Kerastar pointer, which is a pointer with uh, where are we with the right hand side dot buff. Okay, so we swap those two pointers. So now right hand side dot buff now points to the old the compiler generated temporary, and the compiler generated temporary now points to buff, and the compiler generated temporary will automatically be deallocated. The destructor on that will be called. So um, as a result. Um, we should put a, uh, a print statement in the destructor, and you'll see that. I'm going to do it. I didn't think to do this. Okay, now let me just show you that. And the one that's going to get destructed, <laughs> there it is, you see. So now we get a destructor for the uh, compiler generated temporary no not really because we swapped them for what was the old buffer is what gets destructed right there and then the second destructor call is for uh, this guy uh, this string dog that gets that gets destructed so um, real slick operation you got to admit that's a pretty slick move there and what I have commented out would be a, a real naive, not so efficient implementation of this same procedure. Namely, where we would manually delete the old buff, then we would set the, set the old buff equal to uh, whatever came in here, and then we would set the right-hand side up buff equal to null pointer. But you know what? We don't do that in this case, but who cares? One of the rules of move semantics is... Whatever parameter gets passed into the move constructor or move assignment operator is invalidated by the move. So, you, but that's okay. What do we care? This compiler temporary is going to be gone anyway. So, it's a pretty slick implementation. Now, let me also show you the move constructor. Now, this is one way of doing the move constructor where we uh, set buff equal to. Um, this compiler generated temporary that happens, same deal, and then we set s.buff equal to null pointer. Here's a better way to do this. Buff gets std, ex oh sorry, exchange. Uh, let me see if I can do this. And we don't really need this. Um, buff with null pointer. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry, wait, uh, buff gets um, s.buff. Oh, sorry, s.buff. Okay, so what's happening? What we do is we save the old s.buff. Okay, so we have this, which was generated by a compiler, as a compiler temporary, most likely. So that gets saved. Then we set it equal to null pointer. So we don't need this anymore, by the way. So then we set it equal to null pointer. Um, and then what gets returned, we saved s.buff and that gets buff gets set equal to s.buff. So this is an even slicker uh, implementation of the move constructor. So the, what's the difference between the move constructor and the ordinary copy constructor? The copy constructor, we have to do a new and a string copy. We do neither of those here. Um, and, and both of those can be expensive. All we do is a, a pointer swap, period. So. I hope that helps you understand uh, move constructors and the rule of five. So what, what I'm trying to show you here is if you follow the rule of five, what you get are move, um, move well, you know, you get the move assignment instead of the copy, uh, copy assignment, which I think is a savings. Many people hail um, move semantics, which came along with uh, C++11 as just like sliced bread. It was like, you know, having another Bjorn Straustrup be born for C++. So um, I'm not sure it's all of that, but it certainly can make C++ programs even more efficient than they already are. I hope that helps. I may, if, if it's still confusing, I may have a follow-up video where I show you some other examples of move assignment and uh, move constructors just to further explicate it if it helps. I hope this uh, helps you understand um, move constructors and the rule of five. Uh, Brian Malloy over and out.